founder and president of Eurasia Group and author of the new book, The Power of Crisis, How Three Threats and Our Response Will Change the World, Ian Bremmer. Ian. Uh, she served nine terms as a California congresswoman and was a ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee. She's the author of Insanity Defense, Why Our Failure to Confront Hard National Security Problems Makes Us Less Safe. Jane Harmon. Thanks, Jane. All right, so... Um, Last week, I started the show by saying nobody likes to talk about abortion, and then we did. So let's do it again. Uh, I don't really want to, but, I mean, it's, it's just whatever what's on everybody's mind. It's, I would say it's a big issue. It's so big that it makes me think... It makes me think about the Civil War, you know, pre-Civil War, where, because we seem to be going toward this place in America where we're going to be two countries. One where you're a free woman, and one where it's a Dred Scott situation, you know? I mean, when you look at some of the things that are being proposed in some of these states, I mean, Louisiana says flat out it's, it's a homicide. So when you drive from L.A. to Nevada, on one side of the border, you're just a free person. The other side, you're a criminal. You can fly across the country and gain and lose your reproductive rights 20 times. <laughs> How can America sustain that it can't and it's wrong and what's wrong with this is that it will get worse unless the supreme court let's pray let's pray comes out with a different decision from the draft opinion one well, that is not going to happen more to the center i think it could happen i think there are institutionalists on the court and this will well, absolutely politicize the court for years to come. <laughs> I think that already happened. Well, I don't. I, I actually don't. I think. You don't that, think the court has been politicized? Yes, but the hearing process politicizes choosing justices, and when they get on the court, they have uh, firm views, but they can change. For example, I'll, I'll just stop with this. Harry Blackman, who wrote Roe v. Wade, was a Republican appointee of Richard Nixon, and I don't think anyone well, expected him to write that opinion, and he did, and it was for the time, radical and important for women. So that's the Democratic plan, hope. I accept that that's what happened when Roe versus Wade was written, but that was a time when jurisprudence actually held sway among the Supreme Court justices. Um, we don't appoint Supreme Court justices that way anymore. It is all Dems or all Republicans. The process has become subverted. We know that. And if you read the draft opinion, I know you did, that Alito had leaked... I mean, it reads like a, a culture war document by an analyst. It doesn't read like it was written by a jurist. I, I mean, it refers to Plessy and Ferguson and, and makes it sound like people that support uh, abortion rights are racist and you get eugenicists. It's extraordinary. It's extraordinary, which is why I am hoping it won't survive okay, the process. Okay, but, but here's what's going on. Here's what's actually happening in states. I mean, let's just take Missouri. Um, now, of course... A lot of these states, it's going to be a race to the bottom to see who can get the harshest treatment uh, or give out the harshest treatment. Uh, in Missouri, uh, you, <laughs> it would restrict you even if you were a non-resident and you had sex in Missouri. You have to prove to the state of Missouri you didn't fuck there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, it, is, it is the show me state. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's funny. That's funny. Uh, also, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't get telemedicine. I mean, a lot of times women get the morning-after pill. You just have to call up with a consultation with the doctor over the phone. You would have to use a phone from another state. Next on the agenda, reining in big government. 